you may have heard the saying, there's no such thing as bad publicity. And there's perhaps no better example of this than the subject of today's video. Greetings, professors, and welcome back to my channel. Though I'm not sure you guys will ever come back again after this video because today I'm about to traumatize you by talking about the one and only Ollie London. And if you're fortunate enough to not know who Ollie is, then just know that what you're about to see cannot be unseen and the things you're about to learn might just make you lose faith in humanity. Consider that your warning. Ollie London is a social media personality who first rose to infamy after he got tons of plastic surgery to look like BTS member Jimin. But that was just the first in a long line of controversies that Ollie has been involved in, with him subsequently going on to marry a cardboard cutout of Jimin, identifying as transracial Korean. I know a lot of people don't understand me, but I do identify as Korean. Coming out as a trans woman and getting more surgery to then look like Blackpink member Rosé, and most recently, abruptly switching to the conservative party and speaking out against transgender activism. And they think it's normal to have a sex change. They think that's completely normal, when it really isn't. And that's not even to mention the numerous feuds he has had with other influencers and celebrities, as well as his atrocious, quote, music career. I love Korea, oh yes I do, you know it's true. Overall, I think it's safe to say that Ollie's career has been one hell of a train wreck. Yet, it's a train wreck we just can't seem to look away from. Despite acting like a total clown and seemingly having no discernible talents, Ollie has somehow managed to rise to the top of the social media scene, becoming one of the most relevant and talked about personalities and getting opportunities and achievements that most people can only dream of. In a way, he managed to accomplish what all the crazy K-pop and J-pop groups on my channel couldn't. And so this raises the question, is Ollie really the idiot or are we? In this video, I'm going to be discussing the absurd career of Ollie London and how he managed to use our negative reactions and outrage to actually climb his way to social media success. But before we begin, in case any of you guys are currently getting surgeries to look like your favorite K-pop idol, firstly... Stop it. Get some help. And secondly, you'd probably be better off just dressing like your favorite idol instead with the help of today's sponsor, Fashion Chingu. Fashion Chingu is an online store that recreates K-pop and K-drama fashion so that you can get your favorite idol's outfits on a budget. And they make this super easy by sorting the clothes out into different collections based on the artist, such as the BTS collection, the Blackpink collection, the TWICE collection, etc. So for instance, I recently got this top that was worn by Red Velvet Sogi, complete with the sleeves, as well as this crop top that was worn by Everglow's Anda. And I also got these clips that were worn by Itzy's Yeji, and guys, aren't they just so cute? Best of all, Fashion Chingu currently ships worldwide and offers free deliveries for orders over $60. And guys, this website has truly been my holy grail, especially when trying to find stage outfits for my dance covers, so I honestly can't recommend it enough. So be sure to check out the link in the description because they're currently offering a 25% discount site-wide for their Black Friday sale. Huge thanks to Fashion Chingu for sponsoring this video, and without further ado, Let's jump right back into the story. Everything began in October of 2018 when the show Hooked on the Look traumatized viewers with a sight that could never be unseen and a person they wish they never knew. Introducing Ollie London, a 29-year-old British man who was obsessed with K-pop group BTS and had gotten over $100,000 worth of plastic surgery to look like his favorite member of the group, Jimin. I had all of the fatty tissue removed from my chest. Um, I've also had a blepharoplasty, which basically was work on my eyelids for rhinoplasties. Um, angle reduction, which is basically a jawline surgery. We also have a silicone chin implant here. The episode follows Ollie around as he gets even more cosmetic procedures, discusses his plastic surgery addiction with his friends. No, I'm not going to get addicted um, 
I think we're past that. I think we're past that. And terrorizes Asians in Chinatown by forcing them to answer the dreaded question. Do you think I look a little bit? You think I look like Jimin a little bit? Like? Oh, yeah, I think so. Honestly, if you're Asian, then you know that being rude in person is like our biggest nightmare. I'm sure he gossiped about Ollie afterwards, though. But okay, at this point, you're probably wondering why BTS. What did the BTS boys do to deserve? of a fan like Ollie? Well, their only crime was that they were too famous. After all, what better way to appeal to the algorithm than to attach yourself to the most famous boy group in the world? Officially though, Ollie claims that he first fell in love with BTS in 2013 when he was teaching English in Korea. As if it wasn't suspicious enough that Ollie would be able to live, let alone teach in Korea with his Korean skill level. <laughs> Sources have also claimed that Ollie never actually posted about BTS prior to his stint on Hooked on the Look in 2018. Coincidence? I think not. Regardless though, the Hooked on the Look episode quickly went viral, generating all sorts of reactions from the public, ranging from concerns over his mental health and plastic surgery addiction to backlash over his obsession of Jimin. Overnight, Ollie became a K-pop meme, and even international news outlets began reporting on the story. And so, just like that, Ollie has successfully been catapulted into worldwide infamy. Something I'm sure the public now regrets, because much like a lingering fart, he was going to end up being a presence that the world could never truly get rid of. And sure enough, throughout the next year, Ollie was practically inescapable, using his newfound notoriety to squirm his way into TV shows like X Factor, Celebs Go Dating, Rich Kids Go Skin, The Today Show. Hell, even viewers of this channel weren't safe. Because yes guys, I too made a video with Ollie London. So first you jump out like this, and then you jump in and put your hands in front of you. And boy, do I have a story time regarding that situation. So basically, he actually seemed pretty friendly in person, and we had a decent time hanging out together, right? So I made a positive video where like, I did not shake him at all, it was just a happy, positive video, and he even thanked me for it afterwards. But then, just a few weeks later, he then secretly unfollowed me on all social media, and then acted like he never even knew me. <laughs> Which like, okay, to be fair, sometimes even I don't want to associate with myself, and also, I'm not famous enough to help him with his clout. But like still, I just thought the whole situation was so shady, especially since he was actually the one who asked me for the collab in the first place. And indeed, asking to be featured on other people's shows only to then turn around and act as if he had been invited was something Ollie apparently did often. Ollie London's in the studio. Hello. Hello, Isaac. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, no, thank you for reaching out to us. I think it's the first time we've ever gotten a chance to actually interview somebody who's reached out to us first. But soon, even sliding his way onto TV shows and YouTube channels was no longer enough for Ollie. In February of 2019, Ali extended his reign of terror to the music industry, making his debut with the song Perfection. Despite receiving terrible reviews and being universally hated, Perfection somehow managed to peak at number 31 on the iTunes K-pop charts, proving that all the hate had just contributed to Ollie's rising relevance and fame, something which he was sure to brag about in his lyrics, with lines such as In reality though, Ollie's skin had much bigger things to worry about, such as potentially developing necrosis due to all the plastic surgeries he was getting to his nose. A point that was absolutely highlighted by Dr. Nassif when Ollie went on the show Botched in mid-2019, seeking his fifth rhinoplasty. In Oliver's case, he barely has any cartilage which is going to make it difficult to give him the look that he wants, but it would also make it an incredibly high-risk surgery. My skin can die? Die. That's terrible. And, and this whole little round thing, this thing, the center unit will just turn black. Yeah, black. Well, and it'll fall yeah. off. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a few things that a K-pop star needs. So obviously you need to be able to sing, dance, look good and have a nose. But if it fell off, I couldn't be a K-pop star. Yeah, I think not having a nose is the least of your problems there, Ollie. But despite Dr. Nassif's warnings, Ollie proceeded with his plans anyways. And just weeks later, he actually headed to his beloved country of South Korea to get not just the fifth rhinoplasty, but what was essentially a full face of plastic surgery. The entire trip was documented in a follow-up episode of Hooked on the Look, which followed Ollie around as he pretended to fangirl over Jimin. Jimin, I love you. I love you so much. Starting hey BTS. Before heading over to the VIEW plastic surgery clinic in Gangnam to undergo the procedures. So I want like a very cute K-pop nose yeah. and a very cute uh, smaller face. We then get to see Ollie reveal his new look to his friends back in London, who seemed shocked to find out that even Korean plastic surgery has its limitations. In total, Ollie had gotten an additional $65,000 worth of plastic surgery, bringing his grand total up to $165,000. But in case you were wondering where Ollie got all this money, just know that by this point, Ollie's platform had grown so large that plastic surgery clinics were actually willing to provide their services for free or possibly even pay him to visit their clinics, all in exchange for a shout out on his social media. View Plastic Surgery would be the first to do this, but they would not be the last, with Ollie subsequently going on to collaborate with plastic surgery clinics across the world. And while using someone like Ollie London as an ambassador might seem counterintuitive at first, if you actually think about it, he is in fact a great showcase of these surgeon skills. Like you know those friend versus sand TikToks? If he falls, I do your homework. If he falls, I do your chores. Well, that's basically Ollie's face. And the fact that these surgeons were even able to shave off any more bone without his whole face falling apart is truly an achievement in and of itself. But okay, as much as we can dunk on Ollie all day, the truth is he was now making money from his platform. In other words, he had successfully upgraded himself from a K-pop meme to a legitimate influencer. And so naturally, the next step was to, of course, move to the city of LA. In late 2019, Ollie London packed his bags and moved across the pond. And along with his new living situation, Ollie also upgraded his social circle, with him now regularly being seen around the likes of D-list celebrities like Frenchie Morgan. Frenchie, if you didn't know, is a well, French TV personality and model. What's up with all these people naming themselves after their places of birth? Anyways, she had previously appeared on reality TV shows like Rock of Love, I can't scream, right? That's also, that's fucking easy to fucking scream! Celebrity Big Brother, because you never play the game, you always lose everything. Oh and she even had her own Hooked on the Look episode, where, like Ollie, she too was apparently getting plastic surgery to look Asian. I'm not gonna be happy until I do all my surgery so I can look more Asian and more sexy. No wonder the two hit it off. Frenchie and Ollie actually go way back, and the first time that they were seen together was actually in 2018 during the premiere for Frenchie's reality TV show, Frenchie's World. Yes, I'm filming Frenchie World okay. the next six months. During which Ollie was still nothing more than an irrelevant sidekick. I feel like I'm being rude. Who is this? How you doing, guys? <laughs> I'm, I'm Ollie London. I'm Frenchie's best friend from the UK. But now that it was 2019 and Ollie had officially risen up to Frenchie's level on the reality TV ranks, the two could finally use each other mutually for clout. And so they started being seen everywhere together. Sometimes as lovers, sometimes as friends, depending on what's convenient, I guess. Anyways, Frenchie had actually accompanied Ollie during his trip to Korea, and despite being a huge fan of plastic surgery herself, evidently, <laughs> even she was allegedly shocked by the number of procedures Ollie got while he was there. Ollie is gambling with his health, with his body, and with his mind, and that's what scares me because we all know plastic surgery can be fantastic, but it can also become a nightmare. This was the basis of Ollie and Frenchie's appearance on the Dr. Phil show in December of 2019, where Frenchie expressed her concerns over Ollie's plastic surgery addiction. I support plastic surgery. I think it's amazing when it's done the right way. 
But what I don't agree with is he wants to rush to do back to back to back to back surgery. According to Frenchie, Ollie had lied to her and claimed that he was only going to get that fifth rhinoplasty when in fact he ended up getting a full phase of surgery instead. So in May this year, I was in Korea with Ollie and it was already planned that he has his nose done for the fifth time. However, Ollie lied to me and he decided to do five surgery in one day. This is of course despite the fact that we clearly saw them discussing his jaw shaving surgery during the episode of Hooked on the Look. I'm having the bone shaved down to make my face smaller and symmetrical. Whoa. I know, it's going to be painful. Ooh, that sounds really painful, baby. Really. I mean, I just find it hilarious that Dr. Phil's team didn't seem to see all the discrepancies, and Dr. Phil himself was taking the whole thing so seriously. Like, at some point, he actually thought he had gotten through to Ollie. I think you're really selling yourself short. You're not being your own best friend. Yeah, I guess I'm my worst critic, like I do put myself down. Every time I look in the mirror, I see a fault. But I want you to really think about not abandoning yourself and who you are, because in the final analysis, it's you and you, buddy. But clearly, the whole thing was just a ploy for the pair to get on TV, and for Ollie to do this in front of millions of viewers. Jimin, I want to marry you because I love you so much. Starting hey, Jimin. Obviously, Jimin never accepted the offer, but this didn't stop Ollie. And in January of 2020, he went through with his foreboding proposal by marrying the next best thing, a cardboard cutout of Jimin. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for Las Vegas. The ceremony took place at the Viva Las Vegas, which is a chapel that provides traditional and themed weddings. And it seems what Ollie went for was the Elvis wedding package, which according to the website, features incomparable Elvis impersonators that boast real professional singing cred. I was actually about to suggest that Ollie apply to be part of their Jimin wedding package, but now that I think about it, I'm not sure he would even qualify. Like an echo in the forest that I got to Arigacho. Yeah, yeah, life goes on. But anyways, now that Ollie had officially married Cardboard Jimin, there was no place for girlfriend Frenchie. Maybe that's why the pair fell out just months after the wedding ceremony, with Frenchie going on to make a series of videos exposing Ollie. The next three months, I will be doing many videos exposing Ollie London. I had enough with Ollie, and I think now is the right timing to speak out. In these exposés, Frenchie accused Ollie of many things that we pretty much could have already guessed, such as being a fake army, writing his own press releases. He's always sending fake email and fake press releases about himself to YouTuber. And using the Black Lives Matter movement for clout. So because I've been a lot on Twitter, there's been so many people talking about me on Twitter because I'm supporting the Black Lives Matter and protests and stuff. So I had 200,000 views on the video. So because of that as well, I'm getting a lot of requests. So it's just, you know, I'm just staying relevant. Okay, wow. so let me clarify that. He's using Black Lives Matter so he can stay relevant, so he can make money. It seems like Frenchie genuinely thought she was going to bring Ollie down with these accusations. And while it's true that these claims would have been devastating had they been made against literally anyone else, when it came to Ollie, these were simply small additions to his steaming pile of controversies. And speaking of Black Lives Matter, in May of 2020, Ollie caused yet another stir when he announced on Twitter that he had gotten cornrows in order to quote, look more gangsta for his upcoming K-hip-hop single, Lockdown. Honestly, at this point, I don't even know what's worse. The fact that he's appropriating black culture, or the fact that he's appropriating patients with Parkinson's disease. Unfortunately for Ollie though, this scandal didn't make headlines for long. Because during this time, there was a new pseudo K-pop act on the block that was arguably generating even more buzz and outrage than Ollie himself. That's right guys, it's Gucci! <laughs> Dubbed UK's first K-pop group, Kachi was an ensemble consisting of four young women from the UK, of which only one was actually Korean. 
Additionally, the members were involved in another scandal where they were accused of mocking Jenny from K-pop's biggest girl group, Blackpink. More on them later. Leading to widespread hate from Jenny's massive fan base. But if you thought Ollie had finally been dethroned as the world's most hated Korea boo, then you would be wrong. Because where there's K-pop controversy, you can always expect to see an Ollie. And sure enough, in a Channel 4 documentary about Kashi's debut process, we get to meet the brains behind the group, including their band manager Monica, as well as their publicist, who of course turned out to be none other than Ollie himself. So today is the most important day in Kachi's career. They've been working so hard on this moment. And it turns out, Kachi was just a pawn in Ollie's grand scheme to pollute the K-pop world with more carbon copies of himself. There's millions of K-pop fans in the UK alone. So when they see this brand new girl group, it's gonna inspire all these little girls and boys that they can be a K-pop star as well. No, God, please, no, no! The thing is though, unlike Ollie, Monica and Kachi were actually doing all this unironically. Like they were actually trying to be taken seriously as a legit girl group. And at some point, Monica finally realized that having Ollie on the team was doing them more harm than good. So in a last ditch attempt to save their reputations, Monica and Kachi abruptly cut ties with Ollie, leading to a disgruntled Ollie going on a full out tirade against the band. In a series of now deleted TikToks and videos, Ollie insults the members and accuses Monica of using him to get on TV. Monica's a mess. Girl, I've just done all this for you. I've just made you. I've got you in the press, got you 10 million views in the music video, got you a TV show, and that's how you thank me. Catchy, Coco is a nice girl. She's sweet. The rest of Catchy are not very polite. You know, they don't say please or thank you. They have no star quality whatsoever. They're super, super boring. They don't have the charisma. I'm sorry to say it, there might be some catchy fancy. They do not have charisma, they do not have star power. They were never stars in the first place, they never will be. Because Kachi was so hated at the time, opinions were divided, and some people were actually on Ollie's side for the first time. And so, as 2020 drew to a close, and while Kachi was still reeling from all the hate they were getting online, which Ollie technically contributed to, Ollie, on the other hand, wrapped up his year by ironically featuring in an anti-bullying documentary. Yeah, so I've basically got a show called Controlled and it's basically about anti-bullying so obviously I get so much bullying because um, you know I'm doing the k-pop music and I'm doing it with Alicia Jade from Love Island she was on it back in 2017 and we're basically raising awareness of yeah. the effects of online trolling. Clearly Ollie had once again come out on top in another controversy and with public interest at an all-time high he was determined to make the upcoming year of 2021 his biggest and most scandalous yet. Since I lived in Korea, I feel like I identify as Korean so I can be addressed as they, them, Korean or Jimin. So that's where I'm gonna end part one of this video. If you're enjoying it so far, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you'll be notified as soon as part two comes out. And if anyone wants to see the video that I did with Ollie, then I'll link it in the description below. It's actually currently unlisted, so you're not gonna be able to find it on my channel. But yeah, with that said, I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Thank you for watching and special thanks to my Patreon members for supporting my channel. If you'd like to watch reaction videos and other bonus content, then be sure to check that out on my Patreon.